In August of 39, Hitler sent his foreign minister to Moscow to sign a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union and make a secret deal with Stalin. Russia and Germany would divide Poland between them. Hitler, confident that Stalin would not interfere with his plans, was now free to set the world's agenda. He was looking far beyond Poland. Earlier that summer, the King and Queen of England visited the United States. Many Americans did not quite trust Great Britain. They believed England had tricked the United States into entering a European war in 1917 and would try to do so again. The royal visit was a stunning public relations success. If war was to come, officially neutral Americans would be rooting for gentle King George and his wife not for Adolf Hitler. As Europe moved closer to war, the newsreels showed Americans indulging in all sorts of mindless activity. To frighten Europeans, Americans seemed to have become even more oblivious to the world's problems than ever. Happy days were here again, but not for all Americans. The Great Depression was far from over. 11 million people were still unemployed. Four million families were surviving on incomes of three or four hundred dollars a year. Americans seemed intent on ignoring reality dancing to songs that made no sense. The dipsy doodle's the thing to beware. The dipsy doodle will get in your hair. And if it gets you, it couldn't be worse. The things you say will come out in reverse. Like you love I and me love you. That's the way the dipsy doodle works. The dipsy doodle is easy to find. It's almost always in back of your mind. You never know it until it's too late. And then you're in such a terrible state, like the moon jumped over the cow hay diddle. That's the way the dipsy doodle works. Dawn broke on September 1st, 1939. Adolf Hitler defied Britain and France and changed the course of world history. Adolf Hitler's all-out attack on Poland makes the long-dreaded European war a certainty. Prime Minister Chamberlain of Great Britain gave the Nazi dictator a zero hour for withdrawing his troops from Poland. The king comes to number 10 Downing Street, and this is without precedent. The prime minister should go to the palace, but in the dire emergency, George VI violates custom. Inside, there's a fateful discussion. Britain will not back down. The king has given his assent to the final decision of the prime minister to resist Nazi Germany. The aged Neville Chamberlain and his wife, on his shoulders, the heavy burden, the burden of declaring war. Up to the very last, it would have been quite possible to have arranged a peaceful and honorable settlement between Germany and Poland. But Hitler would not have it. Six hours after Great Britain declared war on Nazi Germany, the Republic of France followed. All France is in a maelstrom of activity. The Maginot Line has already opened fire on the Germans. The sparring is ended. World War II has begun. Let no man or woman, thoughtlessly or falsely, talk of sending American armies to European fields. I have said not once but many times that I have seen war and that I hate war. I say that again and again. I hope the United States will keep out of this war. I believe that it will. And I give you assurance and reassurance 
that every effort of your government will be directed toward that end. As long as it remains within my power to prevent, there will be no blackout of peace in the United States.